In this video, guys, we are going to be talking about your comments, and if you have a question, we want you to leave them down below, and we will be happy to answer them. Without further ado, let's check out this first question. Adventure Ready says, I said I would never marry again, but now I'm rethinking that position. She's a beauty. I think he's talking about me. Adventure Ready. Okay. All right, so here we go. Brian B dash P six five eight six. So this is a very valid question on there, but I'm going to say it's actually more of a statement. So I'm going to assume that you are probably a suspension expert. So I would love for you to respond to this and help me um, become more educated on this as well. So he says, adding a non-progressive leaf to the pack will even the even stiffer ride must be brutal no thanks so what is he talking about this is our f53 suspension adelie so what he doesn't understand is that typically on these motorhomes if you have a coach weighing less than 18,000 pounds you're going to have parabolic springs in the front now for those heavier coaches they actually add one more spring to the pack to probably help carry the load. Hmm. That's kind of like what WeldTech Designs does for those coaches already as well. They add a parabolic spring, which is progressive. So it's not non-progressive. Any parabolic spring is going to be progressive, meaning it's thicker in the center and gets thinner as it moves to the outside. You will notice one other key component of our progressive spring is that there is actually arc built into the spring so we actually allow for an air gap between the second and third spring so what that does is it supports the load at normal ride ride right we're not making it stiffer but as more a load is applied to each wheel the spring actually kicks in in the progression rate so our parabolic spring is actually really progressive contradicting what you say so i just my goal here is to help educate you on our product and how it works so the progression rate is actually dramatically more than what you would find on a normal coach most of these coaches are overweighted for the spring and we're going to go into this huge in wtdu where we really break down the F53, F53 spring, the weight carrying capacity, and how it reacts to loads applied to it. So it's really not going to make it stiffer. Now, here's what could make it stiffer is a shock possibly that is just too stiff, or maybe that just lacks any compression at all. So we've taken this a step further because with any, you're going to have a progression rate that's going to increase as load is applied to it. Now, as that load comes off it, right, it wants to return to its natural state and it unloads very quick. Now, where it's important is to have a shock that is matched with your spring that will control how fast the spring extends. That's our rebound control in our shock. Now we took it a step further even more and we went to a 2.5 gas pressured shock to give you the most optimal performance that we could possibly get out of a shock while controlling the heat of the shock, the heat dissipation of the shock as well because a lot of twin tube shocks, the oil's trapped on the inside, never truly cooling that oil. So there's a lot more factors that really go into this. And again, guys, this is WTDU stuff. We're going to break this stuff down and really teach you guys, educate you as best as we can so that you can understand how it works. So unfortunately, Brian B, it's really not going to make the ride stiffer. And if you already have a nice riding coach, it sits at a good height. You may just want to opt for a really good set of 2.5 shocks that are going to control your compression and rebound. So there is lots of things that we can do to, to tailor a specific kit to your needs of your F53 chassis. And I'm really excited about the F53 products that we have coming 
and uh, some solutions to really make these coaches ride better without spending upwards of twenty or thirty thousand dollars to do that. Again, my goal is to build you guys components that all of you can afford and just get out and enjoy enjoy the journey. Right? That's what it's all about. All right. We're moving on. Let's see what else we got. I want to do this. So let's see. Remock 11 says, oh my gosh, um, I bet they handle amazing. I have a Ford Class C 23 RB and my handles like a boat. Well, you know, Remock 11, if you're ever in San Diego, we encourage you. I have a Jayco 24B. If you'd ever like to go for a ride and experience the difference that a suspension system on your class C will make. I encourage you come out, hang out with me. We'll go for a drive and you can really experience it for yourself. I will tell you that it is an expensive test drive because the pure fact that if you can walk away and say that that's not better and it's not worth it, you're going to be pretty pissed every time you go back to driving your stock RV. Just throwing that out there. All right, here we go. Great question. So Darius six, I have a fire truck or a fire e350 super duty any recommendations 100 i have uh great recommendations and this is going to our ford van e-series kit so what's nice about this is if you have a two-wheel drive or even a four-wheel drive build out we offer a progressive leaf spring that is really going to help now it sounds like you have a two-wheel drive and you're going to need an overall suspension package and then that's where it's going to take you back to the og roots and go straight baja grocery getter um, five inch hit up on the front of it a progressive spring in the rear that's going to be to the weight of your build i mean that's going to be it now here's a nice thing about a lot of these older builds i want you guys to keep in mind this so i've said it in a ton of videos but when you do any of the Weld Tech Designs kits, all of these kits are going to include new bushings in the front eye beams, in the radius arms, and in the leaf springs. So when we talk about preventative maintenance things that you're typically going to need to replace anyways, we're taking care of all of that in the suspension itself. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like a no-brainer, but we still got to think about it. It is, you know, it can be expensive depending on what you want. Let's see, somebody learned something. The 7.3 Godzilla V8 has the same power. Acceleration look good. Yeah, no, the 7.3 is awesome. I love having that in there. So let's see, Jeremy, I want to get my rig to look that way exactly. Hey, just send it to us. ALB2571, we can do that. Um, here we go. So can we do a lift kit mod on the transit that will check all the boxes? So this looks like it's going to be Nilan Nalini. Man, I'm screwing these things up. So, hey, I'm sorry, guys, if I'm totally screwing up your username. So, again, what's the best transit kit for you? So, really, I'm going to say picking the best transit is going to come down to a couple things. The first thing is I would say, how much ground clearance do you need? Or what size tire do you really want to run? It's going to be appropriate for your van. If you want to run a 265, then you could get away with a two inch or three inch kit on a two wheel drive van. If you want to go to a larger size tire, like a 285, well then you're going to need to run a five inch lift kit on the van. Now here's where it gets really important, is if you have a two wheel drive, mid roof, high roof, even a normal low roof van, maybe you've turned it into a camper van and you've added significant weight to it. When we offer a progressive leaf spring to match the front lift that's going to help with the load carrying capacity as well as give you more articulation in there. So, of course, with a lot of these kits, we offer shock packages available for them as well. So that's going to be really important. So a lot of it comes down to how much ground clearance do you need to where you want to get? How much tire do you need? And then when it comes to the two wheel or the all wheel drive transits, we're really stuck with that two inch all wheel drive kit currently right now. Who knows? Maybe we got something, something in the works. May want to uh, keep coming back. Got some really cool new all wheel drive products coming. All right. So let's see here. All right. Mr. Larietta 9290. I have a 2016 Chevy Express 15 passenger van. I am towing a 20 foot light duty PJ trailer that weighs 3,400 pounds. I am hauling an 850 pound ATV 
and then two standard ATVs around 750 pounds each. You are towing some fun. I live in Colorado where the elevation is higher and I'm going over the mountain passes. I got my foot all the way in the floor and this van is just gutless. Someone told me to change the rear end to a 410 gear and I believe uh, it's kind of cutting out. So let's just talk about that. So if you're going to be towing significant amount of weight, gears is always going to help. And if you go to a larger tire size, gears are going to help benefit you from there as well. So I will definitely tell you, it sounds like with the amount of weight that you're towing, a 410 gear is going to be really nice with that 6.0 gas engine. So I typically am towing more weight. I'm up around that 10,000 pounds towing with my Chevy Express 6.0 gas. And I actually went to a 456 gear, but I'm also running 35 inch tires. So there's a lot of things to consider, not just, hey, pick a gear, um, you know, it really is going to depend on the size tires that you're running and overall tire size as well. Now, personally as well, on a 6.6, my new van, my 6.6 Duramax, I am running that same 410 gear ratio in the front and in the rear for towing that same trailer because of the Duramax. All right, guys, so maybe that's all the questions for you. All right, guys, so I hope that you enjoyed this little Q&A session that we did today. And if you found this helpful, please give this video a big thumbs up. I want you to like it and subscribe. That big red button that's just blaring you in the face. Come hang out with me some more. I would love to have you guys. I'll see you in the next one. All right, that's enough questions for today. I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you did, like and subscribe to this channel. I will see you guys in the next video.